So we have to 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 give a brief definition uh, a brief definition about civic education. So according to Dal 2002, civic education is the type of education that fosters student uh, fosters youth democratic attitudes, skills and knowledge to engage and work on important uh, public issues and make democracy a way of life. In a similar vein, the UNDP Democratic Governance Group 2004 indicates that civic education typically comprises three elements, which are the first civic disposition, civic knowledge, and civic skills. The importance of civic education. So the main goal of teaching and learning civic education is that in order to create good citizens. So there has been a few research literature on effective pedagogical practices that foster the knowledge skills and dispositions in students to achieve the required objectives. In Nigeria, civic education and engagement values face many challenges which in turn make any attempt to establish a sustainable democratization almost difficult. The Algerian universities are important areas for innovative ideas and civic-oriented initiatives, as well as an established platform for free interaction and communication with stakeholders and decision makers. Rethinking and reconstructing our teaching and learning objectives should be based on new frameworks and strategies which put both teachers and students in the realm of civic-oriented education. <laughs> the civics program listed below is designed to foster and support students' cross-culture communication, tolerance, citizenship, understanding, respects, cooperation, collaboration, and solidarity. So, civic education principles in EFL classes. So, we have strategies and techniques. First, strategies. Civic education values have many important implications on the content, interactions, activities, and classroom arrangements, of course, in EFL classrooms. First, content selection. Content selection is one, is one way to integrate civic education values in the language classroom. Explicitly teaching the cultural components of the target language. So if we have teachers, we have to introduce explicitly those civic education values. Fostering students' tolerant attitudes toward the target language and the target culture. Valuing students' culture and identity as well as improve their critical thinking and negotiation abilities. Okrim asserts that cross-cultural understanding is a, a two-way process that creates learners who are engaged to develop not only a tolerant attitude towards the target culture and members of the target culture community, but also a positive attitude towards their <coughs> own culture. So, moving on to methods of teaching foreign language. So, so, there has been a shift from transmission pedagogy <coughs> to analytical, critical, and reflective thinking. So, it is high time to equip our students with the necessary to tools along with civic-oriented values to think, think globally and act locally. In order to avoid culture and identity clash, so Patrick 2003 stated that an essential element of good civic education is achieved when teacher creates a democratic ethos by discussing a relevant topic in a classroom environment that is conductive to and supportive of 
a free exchange of information and IDs. And where there is a mutual tolerance for diverse opinions and respect for the dignity and worth of each person in the group. Also, energy asset that integrating multiculturalism and citizenship issues may develop critical thinking, empower students to take action for problem solving, and develop the awareness of citizens' issues and global issues. So, teachers and students' role. Within the traditional method or traditional language classroom, we have a pre or fixed and predefined role for both teachers and students. Teacher-oriented approach, so the teachers are mainly the only source of power, management, etc. <clears throat> and students, persistent problem with interaction skills and communication competencies. So, after the shift, civic, uh, we have nowadays, normally, civic-oriented language classroom in which the realization of civic education pedagogies in EFL classes incites the need to design more students engaging and motivating activities and establish platform of communication, which are more predisposed to students' active participation and engagement in the language learning. So learners, active engagement in EFL, classroom interaction. No more students as passive learners. Moving on to teachers, the role of teachers. So teachers normally assume many responsibilities as coordinator, manager, mentor, organizer, consultant, counselor, which lead, uh, we can summarize those, uh, those functions as teachers should assume the role uh, of facilitator. Okay. Teachers as motivators. We have teachers should subvert the traditional roles for both teachers and students more than one way in order to produce topics and activities. So in order to <coughs> uh, give the opportunity for all students in order to participate, exchange ideas, etc. Collaborative learning, so students should collaborate uh, within group work, pay works, and uh, whole class discussion, etc. Autonomous students, students should be as autonomous and create their independence and identity within discussions and exchange of ideas, information, uh, introduce uh, their service, etc. Active students? Okay. I will give the floor to my teacher, Matt. Now I move to talk about some of the techniques that should be implemented in order to teach civic education. I would like to be as brief as, as possible because it's time to finish. So I just read the titles and the, with small uh, or short uh, elaboration. Uh, techniques, uh, classroom activities and sitting arrangements which involves group work with, uh, in an environment free of stress uh, no competition, students should, be, uh, should work in a cooperation. Uh, and the, sh we should adopt a learner-centeredness approach instead of a teacher-centered approach. Uh, the second technique is whole class discussion and learning. And, the, and we finish, uh, we have recommendations and implica impl implications uh, the first is encouraging students freedom of expressions through systematic speaking and writing activities. Second, uh, creating simulations of different roles, in initiating elections for students' government, and the last, the least, not the, empowering students to form their committees to work, in project, to, to work on project groups and action plans in order to increase their motivation to work in a civic oriented, to work in various civic, or to engage in various civic oriented activities. The last one is encouraging vol volunteer work in the community. 
now it's conclusion. What is conclusion? Yes, it's here. As a conclusion, I would like to say that it's really important to ensure a real implementation of the civics program and an efficient reinforcement of engagement values in the Algerian EFL classes. Teachers should be familiar with the available resources and content relevant to civic-oriented education. Throughout an appropriate content selected by EFL teachers, the, activi the activities they engage in, as well as the type of classroom arrangements and interactions. All civic education principles can be, can be successfully implemented, which in turn leads to good citizens who are qualified to, to practice mutual respect, understanding and tolerance, and transmit the civic values-based discourse to outside classroom interaction. And that's, that's it. Okay.